everyone. Welcome to Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, March 17th, 2022. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Does this snake want to interact or not? So far, I've approached the enclosure and he hasn't moved. He's just sitting in the same position. But look what happens once I open the door. He does move backwards and then he freezes. Either it's a defense mechanism because they're afraid or they're assessing, they're giving themselves time to appraise what's going on. So if I'm assessing if this particular snake wants to interact or not, I'm gonna have to say, no, he does not wanna interact. He's been frozen for a while, and then when I start moving around more, he retreats. And that's a very, very, very clear signal that he doesn't wanna interact, because if he wanted to interact with the environment, and that's what I mean when I say interact, does your snake want to interact with the environment? He is clearly saying, no, I do not want to interact with the environment. Now let's take a look at this snake. Does this snake want to interact with the environment? Now we're looking at snakes that are in their enclosures, that haven't come out of their enclosures on their own and that aren't at the doors asking to come out. This snake was at the top of his enclosure sort of moving around and he didn't change his body language when I opened the lid. I approached, I opened the lid. He kept doing what he was doing, which was surfing the glass, moving up towards the top, moving around. He had woken up and I know this particular snake wakes up in the evenings and he is usually pushing at the top of his enclosure wanting out. So the body language that you're seeing here is the body language that he was doing before I approached. And that didn't change when I stood nearby. It didn't change when I took the protective cover off, when I took the lamps off. It didn't change when I slid the lid open. He kept moving around as he was before. Now he's made his way to the top and he's kind of pushing on that protective cover and he will eventually make his way over to the opening and climb up on the edge. But this is a good opportunity for me to show you how I initiate touch and I'm watching if his body language changes when I touch him and it doesn't. I touch him, I help him out a little bit here and move him over to the um, opening and his body language didn't change. He kept doing what he was doing. So that's an indication that he is seeking interaction with his environment. I'm just part of his environment. So he wasn't reacting to me touching him because I was just part of his environment that he was already seeking to interact with. And I was just an avenue to get him closer to the edge so that he could come out. I had to get him untwisted from those wires and I decided to move him to an exercise space that's safe for him instead of where he was right outside of his enclosure. Notice he's tongue flicking. Notice his body is staying mostly relaxed and comfortable. He does move onto my hand for the trip to the next room, but he's not balling up. He's not freezing. He's not hiding his head. He stretches his head out a little bit here as we go down the hall to look at me and he continued to tongue flick intermittently. Now I set him near an activity station that he's been on several times. And again, he's behaving as though I'm sort of just neutral. I'm a neutral part of his environment. He doesn't necessarily want to interact with me, Lori, as a person, but he definitely wanted to interact with his environment because he was wanting out of his enclosure. And when I interfered with that process or when I helped that process along, it didn't change his behavior. He continued to interact in a manner that said he wanted out and he didn't really change his behavior when I picked him up and moved him. Now this is new. I usually set him down and go about my business and he goes about his. But now I decided I would leave my hand next to him to see what he would do and what his reaction would be. Because this is really a test of, well, do they really want to specifically interact with you, the human being? Or are you just part of their environment that they were seeking to interact with? And he's not sure what's going on because this is the first time I've just left my hand there next to him. I usually set him on this station and I go work on my computer. So he freezes, but he's not retreating. He isn't balling up. He's not acting fearful. He's just freezing to appraise the situation and decide what his course of action is going to be because he's not sure what I'm doing because I'm presenting him with a new behavior that he hasn't seen from me before. He decides that he's just going to go about his business 
and he usually likes to climb around this activity station and climb around all of the stuff that is on my work area. And he's moving very slowly, but he decides he's just going to keep going. And he moves past my hand and he was tongue flicking a little bit. And then he climbs around the activity station and then he finds a place to rest on it. And sometimes he'll just rest on this activity station for several hours. Now you might be asking yourself, well, if he's just going to sit and rest on this activity station, why can't he just sit and rest in his enclosure? Freedom is a primary reinforcer. I can't emphasize that enough. All organisms value their freedom and their ability to choose their own behavioral outcomes. They value freedom as a primary reinforcer. And sometimes the snakes just want the door open so they have the option to come out. Sometimes they just want to come out and find another spot to sit because now they have the freedom to do what they want and go where they please. Even if they're not super active and moving around a lot, they just want that freedom as a primary reinforcer. And now he made his way into my business. I was sitting there working and he climbed over onto my computer. I want you to notice that his respiration is elevated. Is that out of fear or excitement? I would say it's out of excitement because here's what elevated respiration looks like out of fear. This snake is nervous and fearful. She's balled up and her respiration is elevated because she is fearful and nervous. This snake's respiration is elevated because he's out exploring, he's exercising, and he's excited that he's getting to roam around, and maybe he's anticipating that he might encounter prey, that he might find food. So his elevated respiration is because he's out exploring, he's seeking, he's investigating, and that's exciting and anticipatory for him. He spends a long time exploring around my desk area, and at times he moves very, very slowly and cautiously, but he doesn't retreat from things, and he doesn't freeze, he doesn't ball up, he continues to intermittently tongue flick. And these are all signs that your snake is engaging in the activity by choice. If he didn't choose to do this, there are places on my workstation where he could hide. That activity tree that I initially put him on has a hole in the bottom with a hide underneath and he has gone in there before, so he knows that's available. But here he's actually coming towards me. I'm literally sitting right there. My knees are pointed towards my computer. I have the camera in my hand. And as slow as he's moving, he is literally coming right towards me and right towards the camera. He's coming so close to the camera now that it is warping his face. His face is perfect. It doesn't look all weird like this. But he's just gotten so close to the camera that I couldn't film him anymore. And now I've put it in wide angle so that I can try to keep him in the frame and it's made him look even more warped. So this snake's name is Boba Fett and he is not warped in any way. He's got perfect confirmation for a Royal Python. His face isn't weird. It just looks weird because of the camera angle. I put it on wide angle and he's just getting so close to the camera. If he was afraid of me, if he did not want to interact with the environment, if he wasn't comfortable and relaxed with his activity, he would not be engaging in this behavior. Now I decide to touch him and see what happens then. And he's like, whoa, she touched me. So now I initiated touch. He was coming so close to me that he was touching the camera. So I said, okay, I'm going to touch you. And now he's retreating a little bit. And I'm not going to force any more interaction. I'm not going to try to continue to touch him. That was his choice. And this was a way that I could introduce a little bit of touch to him. So what he ends up doing is retreating, but it's not in a flighty manner. And he doesn't ball up and hide. He just turns around and he ends up going behind my computer and he crawls back over to the activity station that he's used to. And I thought that he might go down in that hole that's in the activity station, but he doesn't. And so you have to understand when you're interacting with your snakes this way, you need to be watching their body language the entire time. You need to be watching for rectilinear position versus a balled up position. You need to watch for pausing versus freezing. They will pause to assess and decide what to do next. They freeze when they're scared. 
And that freezing is going to present a really taut, tight, tense body posture. Pausing is just, hmm, I stop for a minute and I'm not moving because I'm deciding what I'm going to do next. You want to watch for investigative behavior. He was exploring no matter how slowly he was doing it. And he was investigating the things on my desk. He actually approached and was investigating me. Now, remember when I say interact with the environment, that includes me. So when I say interaction and we talk about choice-based interactions, those choice-based interactions are interactions the snake has with things outside of their enclosure, outside of their hide, outside of their habitat whether that is the room at large, a desk, furniture, inanimate objects, or you. That's what choice-based interactions are. The snake is choosing to interact with their environment as a whole. Now, he got so close to the camera again, he actually climbed onto my phone, and I ended up having to just take him off of it with my hand because he was messing up the filming. And at this point in the night, I needed to go out to the barn and uh, do the last barn chores and feed horses and medicate horses and things. And so I'm going to carry him back to his enclosure at this point. There is our super dwarf reticulated python going down that hole that I told you about. So I get Boba Fett back to his enclosure and I'm trying to put him in and he doesn't want to go back in. So again, all of this body language is telling me he wants to continue to interact with his environment. That may not necessarily mean me personally, Lori. It just means that he wants his freedom and he wants the choice and control to interact with the things in the environment outside of his habitat as he pleases. And you can see that when I'm touching him, it's not phasing him. It's not changing his behavior. He's continuing to do what he was doing despite the fact that I'm touching him, and that is a sign that he sees me as something safe or at least something neutral, and that he isn't reacting in a fearful manner towards me. So I finally get him in his habitat, which is very environmentally complex. It isn't like I'm depriving him of the ability to have activity by putting him back in his habitat, but I can't have him loose while I'm not there to watch him. And so he is safely back in his habitat, and I guarantee that tomorrow night he will be up at the enclosure roof wanting to do the same thing again when it gets dark and he wakes up. And the breeder I got him from warned me that he was super active and that whenever his tub got opened, he always came out and wanted to explore. And I said, fantastic, I want that snake. to see a really excellent example of a snake saying, yes, I want to interact, but I feel I need to remind you what no looks like. And this is definitely what no looks like. If your snake does this or something similar, that's a no. I don't want to interact. And so you should not continue to interact with your snake or press interaction. You shouldn't open their hide, take them out of their hide or force any type of interaction. That's your snake saying, no, thank you. I'm not ready to interact with you or the environment outside of my enclosure.